Hey, what's up everyone? Mike the Manic Geek here, and I wanted to do a quick video on this little guy right here. Uh, this is the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim, and this heat sink was actually purchased sort of out of, an, out of a necessity sort of situation, where we were working in the Bradley M that I just recently posted a video on for the channel, and I found that really none of the heat sink solutions that I had were really gonna work for the inside of this case, given the hardware that I was working with. Now the other challenge that I had, apart from clearance issues, was the, was the TDP on the processor for this motherboard, because this is still using an FX8350 processor, which has a 120 watt TDP associated with it. So I needed something that was going to be low enough profile to fit inside the case, while also being able to competently cool the processor and not have it just melt down on me in the middle of using it. And really scouring the internet for cost-effective solutions kept bringing me back to the Pure Rock Slim. So I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on it, I mean it was only $25 shipped, and see what this little beast was actually capable of. So as far as what comes with the Pure Rock Slim, it's actually a really surprisingly simple packaging. You of course have the Pure Rock Slim heatsink itself. You have a 92 millimeter silent wings fan that comes with it and it is pulse width modulated. Your AMD mounting solution separately with the Intel solutions already mounted to the bottom of the heatsink. And then you've got your clips for the fan and your instruction manual, which as we'll discuss in brief here, really isn't all that necessary. Basically, the installation for this heatsink is the exact same as any other OEM heatsink for either an AMD or an Intel platform. As far as Intel is concerned, since you already have the mounting brackets for Intel installed on this out of the box, and it already has thermal paste applied, you would basically just push in the little pegs on the side of the heatsink like you would with an Intel cooler, and then you mount the fan and you're done. The AMD process is just slightly more involved in that you need to remove the four screws on the bottom of the heatsink that hold in the Intel mounting solution, and then use the spring-loaded tension rod that comes with it for AMD mounting, Make sure that the notches with that rod are lined up with the notches on the base of the heat sink, and then you just line everything up with the two brackets that are on the top and bottom of your AM3 Plus or AM4 socket. Snap everything down and you're all set to go. The one thing to note is that with AMD mounting, you will have to have the fan oriented to exhaust air out of the top of the case. So if you have a case that does not have roof exhaust, this may not be an ideal solution for you just based on how airflow will need to work. Now I have to admit, I wasn't really expecting much in the looks department for a $25 heatsink, especially one as diminutive as this one was. But shockingly, it actually looks extremely good. This is probably one of the more handsome heat sinks on the market, but that's sort of nothing that you guys didn't already anticipate, right? Be Quiet has sort of become synonymous with classy, clean looking heat sinks that just sort of seem to work with whatever platform you install them on, regardless of the hardware that you're pairing it with. And the namesake is genuinely earned here as well, as while I don't have proper sound testing equipment right now to do anything other than really subjective testing, I can say that this fan, even at full load, is quieter than the fans on my GTX 970 inside this case. By far. Ah, but what about temperatures? So the way I tested the temperatures for this one was a little bit unorthodox for what would be considered normal testing methodology, but with the AM3 Plus platform, it's quirky enough that I realistically only trust AMD's overdrive software to stress an AM3 Plus compatible processor. Now, as far as the settings for the, A for the FX8350 on here, everything is basically kept at auto settings. And we ran the test for about an hour, stressing all of the cores for the processor. Now, ambient temperature during this testing, I believe was somewhere in the neighborhood of 23 degrees Celsius. And during the load testing on it, the peak temperature that I saw was about 74 C on the cores, equalizing at around 72 C after approximately 25 to 30 minutes of testing. Under a typical gaming load playing something like Fallout 4, which does tend to be a more CPU intensive title because of all of the textures and the, uh, the pixels that are being rendered on the screen and all of the individual buildings that load into the game in the background, max temperature we saw there was about 70 C. Now to put that into context, TJ Maxx on this 8350 is 90 degrees Celsius before you start to run 
run into anything like thermal shutdown issues. And not once did this processor show any indications of slowing down or stopping. And during all the stress testing, we were maintaining our base clock speed of four gigahertz on this pretty much the entire time without really seeing any dips because of any thermal limitations. So realistically, if we really wanted to, we could probably bump up the multiplier a couple of steps and maybe get a few more uh, megahertz clock speed out of this. Now, especially considering if you were running something like an i5-7600K or if you were running even one of the new Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 3 chips, you could probably even get a better overclock out of this than you would with the factory heatsink, but still not be dealing with incredibly tall heatsink clearance issues or even dealing with a noisy cooling solution in the process. And at $25 for the ease of installation, the cooling efficiency that you have, and the quiet operation that this provides, at this price, I really, really have a hard time suggesting you go with anything apart from the Pure Rock Slim, especially if you can find this on any kind of sale. So for a purchase that was made purely out of necessity, I'm really glad I made it, and I would suggest you guys do the same if you find yourself in a similar situation. But anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know down in the comments below if any of you have actually used this heatsink before and what your personal experiences have been. Also, if you've done any overclocking with it, I'd love to hear what your numbers were and what the temperatures that you were dealing with were in the process. But anyway, guys, until the next video, take it easy. Squirrels fighting back there. It's pretty epic.